All right, so we're going to do a, a little offensive work on the top. So I'm in guard. How do we actually approach this? So yeah. now what you should be worried about is staying south of the border, maintaining control of his hips and his legs, and getting past his legs because he has all the tools at this point. Anything I try and do to submit him from here, he has a way higher likelihood of getting me. So the minute I start coming up here like this, he's up going right after my arm, okay? The minute I start, you know, like leaning over too much and pushing things and keeping arms where they're not supposed to be, he's going after chokes, okay? So what I should be doing is instead of my hands being up here, and everybody's always like, well, what if I need to shove him down? Don't, don't shove them down, you know? If you have control of them, you don't need to shove them down, okay? So you keep your, your hands south of the border. His belt is the border, okay? I like to put him on his hips because then if he does start getting squirrely, then I can just shift and pop him back down again. It's really hard to triangle somebody if he can't get his hips open, okay? If I mess up, yeah, he can try and go to this way. But I'm not going to sit here and hold him all day. That's not the idea. The idea is I don't need to stay safe while he's trying to do stuff and then move past. Okay? So, we get here. As soon as he starts getting squirrely, I shouldn't be thinking, oh, I need to get down here and, and really pin him. Okay? Yes, there are things that you can do from there, but that should not be your goal at this point. Your goal should be to have good posture, stay back here, stay south of the border, work your way past the legs because it's way easier when you have good posture and your hands are back to get past his legs than it is when I'm over here. Okay? He has all the advantages now and he's actually going to use them. Okay? Another so, point guys that you notice Derek always has his hands in sight. He never loses when you lose sight of your hands you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Okay so good example okay if I'm doing stuff like reaching back behind myself, okay, trying to clear something, here we go. Okay, I lost sight of my hand, and he made me pay for it, okay? Reach behind his head, have no idea where that went, he's making me pay for it, okay? So if I know where my hands are at all times and I can see them, then I'm pretty good. He still has to move my hands somewhere from here in order to do something. He's not gonna triangle me when my hands are here. One hand has to go behind his leg, one hand has to go up here for him to actually triangle. To arm lock, one hand has to come up here, okay? And he's gotta go that way, right? So if I make it hard on him, that's a two foot gap right there, okay? This, there's no gap. He just goes for it and he gets it, okay? So we're always thinking defensively for this and then to control and move past the legs. So if I'm already back here, there's a variety of ways to do it, okay? I can push down, staple the leg. Okay. You guys see what he's doing? He's controlling the hips. Once you control the hips, that's the center of the universe in, that, in guard fighting, it really is. And you control those hips, then you can control the legs further, his knees, and then take, take the appendages and have more control. But he's being, stay compact, Keep your arms in close to you. If you extend those arms at any point, he will take it from you, either by an arm lock or use it to strangle you in the, like a Sankaku setup or something. So just even keep those like things this, in. Okay, a guy that knows what he's doing is gonna go right into something. Okay? So like Steve said, you control the hips and you keep your hands under your control as well. He is not gonna be able to submit me from his back without wrist control and the control of his own hips. Okay, so the minute I give one of those two things up, okay, I'm in deep shape. Okay, so stay back, stay compact. Sometimes I'll say use T-Rex hands when you're passing. The minute I start stretching out is the minute that I start offering a nice little tasty morsels to snatch up. Okay, when I start passing like this and using my knees, we're good, okay? When I keep it nice and tight, use the elbows and we're good, okay? Yes, there are lots of people that are super bendy and can still attack from this. That's not the point. We're not thinking about edge cases here, okay? You can still control those guys too if you stay calm and you keep retreating back to the same principles of controlling his hips, staying south of the border, don't let him control your wrist. You notice he's also keeping his posture up. Okay. He's, he's not leaning into him because he's off balance there, isn't he? Okay. Okay. Th these are just basics, but, but basics are good for advanced guys to work on and new guys to learn. Yep. 
and practice a lot. So when you're fighting in top guard, bottom guard, and Nawaza, these are things you need to always keep in mind. You, sh you can never forget these fundamental cardinal rules, especially when we're talking about top fighting now of these situations. So that's really why we wanted to cover this, just to get some good basics down and we can practice them too. Yeah. One of uh, my favorite sayings that, that Steve told me a long time ago is fundamentals win fights. So yes, you can have some really fancy stuff that's thrown in there, but no elite level athlete doesn't have solid fundamentals. You have to have those if you want to get to that level. Good, all right. Well, let's practice. Give it, give it